the time has come folks the time has unfortunately come to do an end of season review on my skidoo expedition we are about mid-march and we are losing snow fast i'm going to do a quick review on my first season with this sled here i'm going to try to keep this around a 10 minute video we're going to be touching on uh, a couple key points them key points being the skidoo expedition platform by itself my uh, model choice which was the SE we're going to talk about my engine choice which was the 900 turbo I'm going to talk about the handling of the machine I'm going to be talking about uh, riding with a double rider we're going to touch on some other things real quick in this video and let's get right into it folks uh, I'm going to try to make this as quick as we can this is a model year 2022 this was a late arrival this was supposed to be here November December of 22 but it got pushed back to the following March so I didn't do any riding that year we had zero snow up here in Maine so this season here was the season that I put the first miles on and just real quick of what type of riding I do primarily groomed trails uh, off trail in fields and off trail on some power lines the main purpose of this sled was for ice fishing but I didn't get this on the ice nearly as much as I wanted to Anybody in New England knows that we had a terrible start to the year. We didn't have good ice till about early to mid February, and I just didn't feel safe getting this on the ice with them poor conditions. So unfortunately, you know, I didn't put nearly as much ice fishing time on this as I wanted to, but I put several hundred miles on, and uh, so far, I'm just super impressed with this expedition platform. I have nothing but good things to say about the expedition. And again, this is the SC900 Turbo. This has a 20 inch wide track. It has a silent ice cobra track with a 1.5 inch lugs with the pre-installed studs and this sled just goes it goes through fresh powder deep powder it goes through sticky snow it goes through snow drifts i've had this in some decent slush i've had it into about a foot of slush i haven't had it in any other real deep slush you know pushing 18 inches plus but i haven't been stuck i haven't even felt like i have come close to being stuck with this this sled just goes uh, I love the 900 turbo engine. We're gonna get into that a little bit later But just the old but just the overall platform of this expedition. I love it I bet half of the miles that I put on this was with my daughter on the back and She loves this sled. She feels safe back there. She feels comfortable back there. She's really comfortable on that two-up seat What do you think Ry? on your end comfy? Felt safe back there We got like 14 to 16 inches. I mean this thing just it just went and I actually don't even notice her when she's back there. If I'm on a groomed trail, I actually have to reach back and touch her knee to make sure she's there just because I don't feel her. I don't feel her weight at all back there. It's just a really comfortable sled uh, riding double and uh, dovetailing off that, uh, my daughter has put on probably 100 miles, 120 miles uh, driving this by herself. She runs this in eco mode, which cuts the engine down to about, I don't know, on a groomed trail, you could maybe get 40 miles an hour out of it. It doesn't have as much acceleration as normal mode and I feel comfortable with her riding in eco mode she feels comfortable she feels safe so that eco mode I actually love on this it's a phenomenal feature of this sled most of my riding I do is in normal mode I have experimented a little bit with sport mode for me personally it's a little more than I ride I'm an average rider I'm not looking to be first in line I'm not looking to you know race my buddies on the trail I'm not looking to line up against people and race them in fields. It's just not the type of racing I do. And looking at just the overall handling of this sled, this doesn't feel like a big sled to me. That was one of my main questions with the sled here before I bought it, you know, was how much you would feel, you know, this size of sled. And honestly, on a groomed trail, I don't even notice it. Uh, again, I'm not looking to race my buddies, but I don't notice the 20 inch wide track. I don't notice the length of the track. This is a very comfortable ride. It handles fine on the trails. Groom trails, no problem. We have a skinny trail from our house to the ITS trail, and it's pretty skinny. It's usually ungroomed. I have groomed it a few times, and even on them skinny trails, this handles really well. I don't feel like I have to really muscle this around on groomed trails. This is very comfortable. Um, it just rides well, corners well, handles well. So that's one of the number one questions I get with the Expedition is how it handles on trails and in my opinion it handles phenomenally if you're looking to ride with a double rider it's an awesome platform 
In my opinion, this is like the perfect crossover sled. You can trail ride, you can ice fish, you can use it for utility. Um, it's just an overall uh, awesome sled in my opinion. So let's move in to the model uh, portion of this. This is the SE and there's a few features that came with this. When I bought this sled, it was about $1,000 more. And with that, you got the air suspension that you can adjust right from the handlebar here. It has an adjustable handlebar mount here. Came with this big box. It has a toolless suspension in the back where you can lock the extension out with just like a little lever there. You don't have to use a tool. And I think that's it right off the top of my head. I can't think of any other options. If I remember right, I think the Silent Ice Cobra with the pre-installed studs was an SE only option. Uh, don't hold me to that, that may be different now. But I'm just gonna talk about a few things uh, with the SE model. I love the air suspension. I think it is uh, worth the thousand dollars by itself. I love being able to change the suspension right here from the handlebars. I ride on level three when I'm by myself. When my daughter gets on, I bump it up to four. If I have a bigger adult on the back, I bump it up to five. In my opinion, it's super handy just to be able to do that from the handlebar, not get on the ground, not get in the snow, reach under there with a tool, mess with a shock, you know, adjust the tension of a shock. I like to be able to do it right from the handlebar. The box uh, is the 135 liter box. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory, not much to talk about there. That's a roto molded box. You can fit a ton of gear in there. To me, that's just a bonus. Uh, I like that it's really easy to take uh, off, really easy to put on. It's just four of the link attachments. Um, so to me, that's just a bonus. Uh, I haven't messed with that toolless lockout in the back. I just keep it kind of free floating and uh, I haven't locked it out once. Um, one thing I want to touch on real quick with that is this does back up really nice in the snow. So if you're backing up in deep snow or even going up a little incline, this will crawl right up a uh, incline, no problem, which is you know kind of what that you know features for. So that's really handy. This backs up as good as they advertised. Um, so overall, you know, I'm really uh, happy with the SE choice that I made and let's move into the 900 turbo That was one of my biggest uh, I don't even know how to word it. I, I was really torn between the 900 or the 900 turbo and As I sit right now filming this video, I'm completely happy with the 900 turbo. I like the extra power I like the extra power with a uh, double rider. I like the extra power hauling ice fishing gear, hauling a drag. I like having that turbo available. I have ridden the 900, same year model, same SE model in the 900. I haven't ridden a Turbo R, so keep that in mind. The 900 I rode was noticeably less horsepower than the turbo. And I'm not saying the 900 is a slouch. I'm not saying it's a bad engine. I'm not saying it's a bad choice. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is it's noticeably less horsepower. And that's one of the number one questions I get and how I answer that for people is if you're just ice fishing or you're just trail riding, if you're noticeably a slower rider, if you're just poking around the woods, you know, running a trap line, if you're using it more as a utility sled, I tell people you probably don't need the turbo. Uh, the 900 will get up and go. I'm not saying it won't, but I'm just saying it's noticeably less horsepower. If you look at the specs, the turbo is 150 horsepower. And I think the 900 is like 90 or 95 horsepower. So there's a huge difference in horsepower there. But I like the turbo. As I sit right now, I'm completely happy with it. They have the turbo R out right now. And I've never once sat there and been like, oh, I wish I had the turbo R. I don't ever find myself saying, I wish I had that engine. I'm completely happy with the turbo. And I ran into two different mottos that I run on whenever I make a purchase like this. Motto number one is buy once, cry once. And what that means, if you're gonna spend X amount for something, it's worth spending another thousand or two to get exactly what you want and not buy something that you regret, something you find yourself saying, oh geez, I wish I would've bought, you know, the next model up or the next engine up. So that was motto number one, buy one, cry once. Motto number two is keep it simple. And what I mean by that is the Turbo is something extra to worry about, whereas just the straight 900 is the straight 900. So I was kind of torn between them two. You know, the air ride suspension, that's something extra to go wrong. The turbo, that's something else to have a problem with. So I ran into them two conflicting ideologies. And as you guys see, I ended up going with the air ride and the turbo. So I went with the buy once, cry once. 
But as I sit right now, I'm completely happy with the turbo. I like the extra speed. And like I said, for my type of riding, I like it more than the standard 900. And you know, the skis, I love them. Them float really well, them track well. Um, the handlebar warmers, uh, thumb warmers, really hot, really comfortable. My daughter, you know, loves the hand warmers back here. Keeps her hands uh, nice and warm. Uh, just trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about. Um, the suspension up front is pretty good. I feel like it handles pretty well in pretty much all conditions. Um, talk real quick about gas mileage. I get about 13 miles per gallon with this, but again, I'm not like right to the handlebar. I'm not racing my buddies. So I get about 13 miles per gallon. The regular 900 can get upwards of like 17, 18. So that's something to consider. This takes the 91 octane whereas the 900 takes just straight 87 so it's a little more per fill up you don't get quite as much miles per gallon out of this so that's something to consider i think i hit the majority of the high points uh, if you guys have any questions on this sled feel free to ask i know we're heading into the end of the spring check season i wanted to get this video out a week or two prior but i didn't have time but if you guys have any questions feel free to ask I have a playlist of a couple videos I've made with a sled. I'll put that up here at the end of the video. You guys can check that out. And I'll also link some videos down in the description in case you guys want to check them out. But we're going to wrap it up there, folks. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.